You've seen network maps before. They are really a core part of any operation, They're any part of network management. And they list the host, they list the connectivity, they list, list IP address ranges and so forth. Well, those are great things for administrators. There are also great things for us because when we're looking at a network, trying to analyze what to attack and where things are, it helps tremendously to have a catalog and also some idea of the connectivity of the devices on the network. Tons and tons of purposes within our scope for use later on in the attack. So this is the phase really where we're building this out, but you'll see throughout the rest of the videos I'll use that nefarious network map to actually build further attacks, and I'll refer back to it uh, as a resource for which systems are doing which, what systems are using this IP address range and that IP address range, and so forth. So I think the one interesting point here that I want to bring out that might not seem so obvious is the concept of system interaction. So a lot of attackers just come into a, uh, a network and start attacking randomly, or they start attacking the hosts that they think are most easily compromised. And that's one approach. It's not necessarily the most efficient approach, though. Understanding the interaction between systems helps us actually target which systems we can attack and which systems we're going to be more efficient on. For example, if you identify during a network map that a system is a domain controller, you can then potentially enumerate which systems are joined to that domain. You now have a fairly interesting idea of how things connect within that network. You know that that client will probably talk to that domain controller frequently. So building a session between the two will most likely go undetected. Versus trying to build an attack from two disjointed systems that almost never talk to each other especially on the infrastructure side, that may set off alarms or at least set off curiosity flags on the administrative side, which we want to avoid. So following the patterns of typical network use and system use when we're attacking, the really the only way to do that is to build out a nefarious network map so you understand that, so you've actually got that illustrated in the catalog. When enumerating these systems, certainly you're identifying systems that are vulnerable for, uh, for example, easier to hack systems, older operating systems or unpatched systems or systems with extra services and features enabled. But you're also potentially identifying systems that may be super hard to hack, but if you do, you have everything. So for example, domain controllers or DNS servers or DHCP servers, being able to hack that kind of core infrastructure server Yes, it's going to probably be difficult because those are, the, those are usually the ones that are well-managed, well-administrated, and probably have the strongest security. But compromising those systems will give you so much that it may be worth the effort, especially if the other systems are, are relatively stable, relatively well-patched and well-maintained. If all systems are equally difficult to hack, you now know exactly which system to go after because you've identified the value of all of the systems. And, of course, enabling later attacks, being able to tunnel back in or remote control back in or get back into this network. Once you have a nefarious network map, you'll know which servers are things like VPNs and where the firewalls may be or probably are, hopefully without touching them, but start to identify those types of intermediate systems and also build out a good idea of where you want to put backdoors, where you want to install methods for re-entry of this network so that you can make it easier on yourself later. Some of the key elements of a nefarious network map here may seem kind of obvious after this discussion, but calling out, you definitely want to start mapping uh, during this process where firewalls are, where proxy servers are, where DMZ hosts and VPN servers are, access points, domain controllers, all of these things are going to be key elements to your attack because compromising these is extremely valuable and compromising these often enables you to compromise other systems later on. So knowing where they are doesn't necessarily mean you will hack them or that you can hack them or that they're easily compromised. It does mean, however, that you've mapped them out and you know where they are. That actually is a fairly key part of this attack. 
For example, you may enumerate the wireless access points inside a network. And you may say to yourself, well, there's not a lot of good attacks. It looks like these things are patched, their passwords are changed, um, they've got good management and so forth. But three months from now, you may be doing a further survey and find that there's a vulnerability, a documented vulnerability in the access points, but you need to find them again. Well, no, you don't need to find them again. You look up your nefarious network map, bang, 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 bang. There's all of the access points. You conduct an attack against those using this vulnerability that you found out about, and you've got a compromise. Same thing with domain controllers. It's rare, more rare every year, I think, to find compromises on domain controllers that are domain controller specific. But if there's a potential vulnerability in all Windows systems that include domain controllers, well, these are the ones you're going to want to come after immediately first, even if they had never been hacked before and had never been part of your attack previously, knowing where they are, well, they don't move around very often. They're generally speaking, not DHCP clients. They're generally not portable machines. So you're probably going to be able to refine them very, very easy. And then bang, 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 you've got your attack in a very, very short amount of time, hopefully before the administrator manages to implement a patch or some mitigation for that attack that you just found out about. That would be fantastic. Enumerating assets for the map, it really does go beyond live or dead IP addresses. I mentioned the concept of ping sweeps earlier, and a real, real simple way to build information about a network is to start pinging every IP address. And that's that's a basic, basic, basic thing. And it used to work a long time ago, but certainly enumerating assets goes beyond that. It goes into doing net BIOS scanning and looking for net BIOS information about hosts and, and what's going on in the network, identifying DNS information, doing a zone transfer, which we'll talk about later uh, on a different video, uh, and then identifying systems based on that. This is a little bit more about doing direct analysis of live hosts on the map, building all this information that is then used to launch later attacks or identify later compromises, potentially.